S3 Media Vault now offers true streaming for videos using Apple's HTTP live streaming or HLS technology, which means you can make your videos impossible to download, even if your viewer is using browser plugins like Video Downloader or Video Download Helper. Creating a streaming video file using s3mediavault.com is super easy. Now, the first thing is make sure that you have set up the CloudFront distribution by going to settings page. There's a separate video in the documentation at s3mediavault.com slash doc. Now you come to the media page where you can see all the media files in your S3 bucket. Scroll down and you can see everything is neatly organized here. There's the main folder, all the files in the main folder. Then there's the subfolders within that bucket and you have all these streaming files. Initially, you, you will not have anything here. It'll just say no files found because you won't have any streaming files yet because now you have not created any streaming files yet. So scroll up here next to the MP4 files, which is what you should be using for video streaming. Use MP3 for audio and MP4 for video. Next to the video files, you will see one more link here that says prepare for streaming. Select the file you want to prepare for streaming and then you click on prepare for streaming. Once you do that, it could take up to a minute depending on your server speeds and how busy the Amazon servers are. So wait for it. Do not refresh the page. Do not click away from this page. Do not close this page. Wait for the browser to stop working. You'll see in the bottom of the page that it is still running. Once it is done, you'll see a message, success streaming file creation is in progress. Please, please wait for at least 15 minutes before using it in a short code. So just wait for 15 minutes. If the longer the video, the longer you might have to wait, but for most videos, it should be done in about 15 minutes. That's it. Now, after 15 minutes, you will see on the same media page, if you come back and scroll down, you will see a whole bunch of streaming files. If you see, these have a weird extension, right? M3U8, that is called the playlist. And then there's all these other .ts, which are basically segment files. So your MP4 file got split into all these chunks, and then M3U8 is the playlist file that will put all these together in real time. And as the player, which is a special player for playing streaming files, that is also a part of s3mediavault.com. So when the player starts playing, it first gets a secure link to this playlist file, and then that file gets this, and from that one, it'll get this one. And as you keep playing the file, it will keep fetching further and further segments of that video. So this was a shorter file, so you can see only a bunch of TS files, seven files here. And then this one is a longer file, which is why you can see a lot more segments here, 44 segments. That's how S3 Media Vault submits your MP4 file to Amazon Media Convert Service and then converts it into a streaming file. So once this is done, all you have to do is create a new shortcode. And here it is very simple, nothing really changes here. You can give it a shortcode name. And from this drop down, this time you will be picking video streaming player option. And then you'll see once you pick that, the source option, everything else goes away and only CloudFront remains. And then you, you do the usual thing, just click Browse S3 and then pick the file that you just prepared for streaming in the previous section on the media page. So make sure you select the same one because if you prepare one file for streaming and pick something else, then it's not going to work and the video will not load at all because you have selected a video streaming player, but you have given it a regular MP4 file. So it'll look for the stream files. They won't be there and it'll just be a blank screen or you might just get an error. So make sure you're using the video streaming player option and pick the same file. You're still picking the .mp4 option. You're not picking the files with the weird extension. So you, if you see here, when you click browse, you will still see all the main folder, the subfolders and the streaming files. We have made sure that you, you cannot click and uh, copy this back into this shortcode. So make sure you pick the same file, whatever you pre prepared for streaming, and then you just save it. If you need to add a splash image to the video, go ahead and do that. Click update shortcode or create new shortcode. You put the shortcode on a page or a post. And when you view that page, this is what it will look like. This is the splash screen. And then you click on play. It starts streaming the file and this is a real-time stream. So you cannot copy it, you cannot download it. Even if you use a browser plugin like Video Downloader, it will say no videos found. 
or it will list a whole bunch of .ts and .m3 U8 files, which you cannot do anything with. You cannot even access them directly because they are all secure. So true streaming means it is a real-time stream. If you have a video that you absolutely do not want even your paying members to be able to download, say you have it on an expiring page, you can use Digital Access Pass to create a page that only lasts for a day, That that is only active for them for, for a day, then they can come here, they can view it. After a day, the page is expired and they cannot get back to this page. And even when they do have access to the page, they cannot download the video. So that is the power of true streaming. Because if you do have a video that absolutely positively has to be watched only from your website and you cannot, and you will not allow anybody to download it for whatever reason, whether they're paying customers or not, True streaming is the only way to do it. And then you lock down the page using a membership plugin like digitalaccesspass.com. And S3 Media Vault, now we can say without hesitation that this is the number one plugin for WordPress for securely protecting and delivering media files to your subscribers, visitors, and paying members. Sign up for my R5 newsletter, Ravi's Rants, Raves, and Roundup Report at subscribeme.fm. And one of the videos or podcast episode I'm going to be doing shortly is about streaming, comparing true streaming versus adaptive streaming versus progressive downloads and what they mean to you and to your members in your membership site.